Self practice 6.5, questions number 1. Convert the following nonlinear equations into the form y equal to mx plus c. Hence, identify y, x, m, and c. So, questions A, y equal to px squared minus q. So, this is a nonlinear equation. Now, to turn this into a linear equation, on your right hand side, you only have can have one term that constrain the variable x. In doing so, I'm going to divide every term with x squared. Now, by doing this, I will get y over x squared equal to. So, this x squared and x squared here will be cancelled. Therefore, you're just only going to have the b minus q over x squared. Now, I can rearrange this so that it will be easier for us to do the comparisons. So here I can write this negative q over x squared plus p. And for this negative q over x squared, I can write it as negative q multiply 1 over x squared plus p. Now, by comparing it with the y equal to mx plus c, the y over x squared will be the y. This negative q will be the m. The 1 over x squared will be the x. And p will be the c. Questions B. We want to turn the nonlinear equations y equal to h x squared plus x into the linear equations. So here on your right hand side, you can only have one term that contains the variable x. Therefore, I'm going to divide every term with x. By doing this, you're going to get y over x equal to, so here you cancel the x, so it will be left with 1x only. Therefore, hx plus, so x divided by x is equal to 1. Therefore, you already convert this into the linear equations. Now, by doing the comparison with the y equal to mx plus c, the y over x is the y, the h is equal to the m, and this x is equal to the x, and this positive 1 is equal to c. Now, there is another way for us to convert this y equal to h squared plus x into the linear equations. I can also divide every term with x squared. By doing this, you're going to get y over x squared equal to, so the x squared here, once you cancel it, you are just going to be left with h plus, this one cancel it, you're just going to be left with 1 over x. Now I'm going to rearrange this, y equal to x squared equal to 1 over x plus h. Now, by comparing this with y equal to mx plus c, the y over x squared will be the y. Actually, the number 1, the coefficients for the 1 over x is 1. Therefore, the m is equal to 1. The 1 over x is the x and h is the c. Question C, we want to turn the y equal to p over x squared plus q into the linear equations. For this question C, you are going to multiply each term with the x squared. Therefore, on your left hand side, you're going to get x squared y equal to, so when p over x squared times x squared, the x squared here will be cancelled, therefore you're just going to be left with the p plus q x squared. So now let us rearrange this. You're going to get q x squared plus p. Now by comparing this with the y equal to mx plus c, the x squared times y will be the y, the q will be the m, the x squared will be the 
x and p will equal to the c. Questions number two. The table below shows the value of x and y obtained from an experiment. The variables square root x and 1 over y are related by the equations 1 over y equal to p square root x plus q, such that p and q are constant. So A, plot the graph of 1 over y against square root x by using a scale of 1 cm to 0 0.5 units on both the square root x axis and 1 over y axis. Hence, draw the lines of best fit. So first, let us draw the scale. So now let us transfer the data from the table onto the graph. So now let us draw the lines of best fit. So based on this graph, we weren't able to find the y-intercept. But we need that information when we want to solve for the questions in B. Therefore, for the graph of the linear law here, we always need to have the y-intercept. Therefore, I'm going to do a little bit of changes uh, for the 1 over y-axis. I'm not going to start it from 0, but I'm going to start it from negative 1 in order for me to have the y-intercept. So after the adjustment, so this will be the graph of 1 over y against square root of x look like. Question B, from the graph, find the value of number one, the Q. So first, based on the equations, one over y equal to P square root X plus Q, we're going to compare it with Y equal to MX plus C. Therefore, the Q is equal to the C. Therefore, Q is the value of the Y intercept. So based on the graph that we draw here, the value of the y-intercept is negative 0 0.75. Number two, we want to find the value of p. So by comparisons, we know that the p is equal to the m, which is the gradient. So to find the gradient, we need to have two points that is on the straight line that we have here. So the first point that we're going to tag will be the y-intercept. So the coordinate will be 0 and negative 0 0.75. So the other point that you're going to choose will be these points here. So the coordinate will be 1.5 and 2.15. So now to find the P, we're going to use 2.15 minus the negative 0 0.75 and divide it with 1.5 minus 0. So solve this using your calculator, you will find that the P is equal to 29 over 15. Number 3, we want to find the value of Y when X is equal to 1.21. Now, if we want to get the value of the y using the graph, we need to change the value of x into the square root of x. As we plot the graph, is 1 over y against the square root of x. So first, let us convert this 1.21 in the form of square root. You'll find that it is equal to 1.1. So from the square root of x exists 1.1 1 .1. we're going to draw a vertical line until it intersect with the straight line that we plot so from the intersection points we're going to draw a horizontal lines to find the value of 1 over y so the value that we're going to get from the graph is the 1.4 so this value 1.4 is the value for 1 over y so 1 over y is equal to 1.4. Therefore, y is equal to 1 over 1.4. Therefore, the value of y is equal to 5 over 7. Intensive practice 6.2, questions number 1. 
convert the following nonlinear equations to the linear form. Hence, identify the y, x gradient, and y intercept. So, questions A, y equal to 5x squared plus 3x. So, on the right-hand side, you have two terms with the variable of x. So, I need to get rid of one of them. So, the first method is, I'm going to divide every term here with x. By doing so, you're going to get y over x equal to, so the x here, after you simplify it, you're going to get 5x. And the x here, you cancel it, you just left with the 3. Now, we already convert this to the linear form. And when we do the comparison with the y equal to mx plus c, so the y will be the y over x, the m is the number 5, the x is the x, and the c is equal to 3. So there is another method for us to convert these equations to the linear forms. Is that we're going to divide every term with x squared. Now, by doing that, we're going to get y over x squared equal to so the x squared here will be cancel. You just left with the number 5. Plus, cancel the x here. You're going to get 3 over x. So I'm going to rearrange this. So y over x squared equal to. So I'm going to write this 3 over x here. This 3 over x, I can write it as 3 times 1 over x plus 5. So now when I compare it with y equal to mx plus c, the y will be the y over x squared, the m is the 3, the x is 1 over x, and the c is equal to 5. Questions B, y equal to p square root x plus q over square root x. So the first thing we can do to convert this into the linear form is you're going to multiply each term here with the square root x. By doing that, you're going to get y square root x equal to. So remember, when you have square root x times the square root x, you're just going to get the x. Therefore, here you're going to get px plus. So the square root x here will be cancel. You're just going to have plus q. Now compare this with the y equal to mx plus c. The y will be the y times the square root x, the m is the p, the x is the x, and the c will equal to the q. The other methods to convert these nonlinear equations to linear form is that I'm going to divide every term here with the square root of x. Now, by doing this, you're going to get y over square root x equal to so here the square root x will be cancelled, you just left with the p plus. So this q over square root x, when you divide by the square root x, is the same meaning as you multiply it with 1 over square root of x. Now solve this, you will get p over q over x. Now I'm going to rearrange this. So y over square root of x equal to, so I'm going to write the q over x, I can write it as q times 1 over x plus p. Now I'm going to compare this with the y equal to mx plus c. Therefore, the y will be the y over square root of x. The m is the q. The x is the 1 over x and c is the p. Question c, y equal to ax to the power of b. So whenever you have two combined terms in an equation, you can change these non-linear equations to the linear form by using the logarithms. So first, we're going to take logarithms to the best of tens on both sides. Therefore, you're going to get log base tens of y equal to log base tens of ax to the power of b. Then on the right hand side, 
I can spread this using the product law in the logarithms. Therefore, I can write this as log base tens of a plus log base tens of x to the power of b. Now, for this log base tens of x to the power of b, using the power law, I can write this as b times log base tens of x. So now I'm going to rearrange this. So I'm going to write it as log base tens of y equal to b log base tens of x plus log base tens of a. So now I'm going to compare it with y equal to mx plus c. Therefore, the y will be the log base tens of y and the m is the b. The x is the log base tens of x and c is the log base tens of a. Questions D. x equal to mxy plus ny. So on the right hand side, I just need to have one term with the variable of x. Therefore, to achieve that, I'm going to divide every term with y. By doing that, you're going to get x over y equal to, so the y here will be cancelled, so you just left with the mx plus, so the y divided by y is equal to 1, then you're going to left with the n, which is a constant. Now, when you compare this with y equal to mx plus c, the y will be the x over y, the m is going to be the m, the x is going to be the x, and the c will be the n. Questions E, yp to the power of x equal to q. So this is another question with two combined terms. So we can turn this into linear form by using the logarithms. So first, we're going to take log base tens on both sides. Therefore, you're going to get log base tens of yp to the power of x equal to log base tens of q. Then on the left hand side, using the product law that we will learn in uh, chapter before this, I can write this as log base tens of y plus log base tens of p to the power of x equal to log base tens of q. And using the power law, I can write this log base tens of p to the power of x as x log base tens of p equal to log base tens of q. Next, I'm going to move this x times log base tens of p to the right hand side. So that I will just have the log base tens of y on my left hand side. Now, for this negative x log base tens of p, I can write it as negative log base tens of p time with the x. Now, I'm going to compare this with y equal to mx plus c now. Therefore, the log base tens of y is the y, the m is the negative log base tens of p, and the x is the x, and the c is the log base tens of q. Questions f y bracket b minus x equal to ax. So for this question f, first I got to move the b minus x to the right hand side. Therefore, y equal to ax over b minus x. So on the left hand side, the y here is the same meaning as y over 1. Now for both sides, I'm going to flip it over. So next, you're going to get 1 over y equal to b minus x over ax. And now, on the left-hand side, I can separate it by writing it as b over ax minus x over ax. So for the terms b over ax, I can write it as b over a times 1 over x minus so the x here after you cancel it you're going to get 1 over a 
Now, by comparing this with y equal to mx plus c, the y will be the 1 over y, the m is the b over a, the x is the 1 over x, and the c will be the negative 1 over a. Or, for this question f, we can use another method. The first one, we're going to expand this. Therefore, you're going to get by minus xy equal to ax. So here we have two terms with the y and the x to get rid of it. So first, I'm going to divide every term with y. So by doing that, when the y here cancel, you're just going to left with the b minus the y here will be cancelled. So b minus x equal to ax over y. Now, uh, the, we want to use the a over x as the y. Therefore, it cannot contain any constants. But we have an a here. Therefore, to get rid of it, we're going to divide both sides with a. So, on the left-hand side, now you're going to get b over a minus x over a equal to, so the a here after being divided, it will be cancelled. You just left with the x over y. So, this one, I'm going to rearrange this. So, x over y equal to negative x over a plus b over a. So, this negative x over a, I can write it as negative 1 over a times x. So, it, would, it will be the same as the negative x over a plus with the b over a. So, now, when I compare it with y equal to mx plus c, the y will be the x over y, the m is the negative 1 over a, the x is the x, and the c will be the b over a. Questions number two. The table below shows the data which relates the variables x and y by the equations y equal to ax cubed plus bx squared, such that a and b are constant. So a convert the nonlinear equations y equal to ax cubed plus bx squared to the linear form. Now, to convert this to the linear form, I have two choices. Either I divide every term with the a cube, with the x cube, or divide it with the x squared. So now, let us refer to the questions in B, which the question asking you to plot the graph of y over x squared again x by using a suitable scan. Therefore, in this case, to convert the nonlinear to the linear, we are going to convert it according to the graph that we want to plot. Therefore, in this case, we're going to divide every term with x squared. By doing that, you're going to get y over x squared equal to, so simplify this, you just get ax, and the x squared here will be cancelled, you just left with the b. Now, by comparing this with the y equal to mx plus c, the y will be the y over x squared, the m will be the a, the x will be the x, and the y-intercept c will be the b. Questions b. So we want to plot the graph of y over x squared against x by using a suitable scale on the x-axis and y over x squared axis. Hence, draw the lines of best fit. So on the table here, we already have the value of the x and y. So we need just need to find the value of the y over x squared while using the value given in the table. So for the first value here, you just text the value of y 0 0.31 and you divide it with 0 0.5 square and so on. So for the answer, we're going to take up to two decimal places. So the scale we're going to use here is 2 cm to 0 0.5 unit on both axes. So now let us draw the scale. So now let us plot the points uh, in the table onto the graph. 
So now let us draw the lines of best fit. So this will be the graph of y over x squared again x look like. Question C from the graph finds the value of a and b. So in questions A, after we convert the nonlinear into the linear forms, we already found that the a is equal to the gradient and b is equal to the y-intercepts. So to find the a, which is the gradient, we're going to take two points that is on the straight line that we plot. So the first point I'm going to take is from this point. Another one, I'm just going to take the y-intercept. So the coordinate of the points here is 3.0 and the other coordinate will be the 5. And as for the y-intercept, is going to be 0 and 0 0.5. So to find the A, using the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, so it's going to be 5 minus 0 0.5 divided by 3 minus 0. So the gradient for this graph will be 1.5. And as for the B, which is the y-intercept, the value for the B will be 0.5 Questions number 3 The table below shows the data which relates the variable x and y by the equations y equal to a to the power of b plus x such that a and b are constant So a convert the non-linear equations y equal to a to the power of b plus x into a linear equations Now, always refer to the graph that the question is asking you to plot because it's going to give you the hints how are you going to convert the nonlinear to the linear equations? So if you look at the questions B here, we want to plot the graph of log best tens of y again x. Therefore, this log best tens of y is the capital Y and then this x is going to be the capital X. Therefore, to convert the nonlinear to the linear, we need to take log best tens on both sides. So next, Using the power law, so we're going to move the b plus x to the front. So next, we're going to expand this. So next, I'm going to rearrange this so that we can compare with the y equal to mx plus c easily. So here, I'm going to write this, uh, going to write the x times log base tens of a first. I can write this as log base tens of a times with the x plus b log base tens of a. So when I do comparison with y equal to mx plus c, the log base tens of y will be the y, and the gradient m is the log base tens of a, the x is going to be the x, and the c will be the b log base tens of a. For the questions B, we want to plot the graph of log base tens of y again x by using a suitable scale on the x-axis and the log base tens y-axis. So hence, draw the lines of best fit. So we already have the value of x, so we just need to take the value of y and convert it to log base tens of y. So the first value here in the table will be the log base tens of 2.83 and so on. We're going to take the value up to two decimal places. So for the graph, for the x-axis, so here we're going to use 2 cm to 1 unit on the x-axis. And as for the log base tens of y-axis, so I'm going to use uh, 2 cm to 0 0.2 unit. So now let us plot the points given in the table onto the graph. So now let us draw the lines of best fit. So this will be the graph of log base tens of y against x look like. Question C. From the graph, find the value of a and of b. So based on the equations that we convert in the questions a, we know that the log base tens of a is equal to the m, which is the gradient, and the b log base tens of a is the y-intercept, which is the c. So to find the a, we're going to find 
the gradients of the graph first. So here I'm going to take two points. The first point that I'm going to take will just be the last point that we plot here as this red line pass through this point. So another point that I'm going to take will be just the y-intercept here. So the coordinates here will be 5, 1.66 and the coordinates for the y-intercept will be the 0, 0 0.16. So here the M will equal to 1.66 minus 1, 0 0.16 divided by 5 minus 0. So the gradient here is 0 0.3. So don't forget that this gradient here is represented by the log base tens of A. So log base tens of A a equal to 0 0.3 now to find the value of a we can change this log forms into the index forms then a is equal to 10 to the power of 0 0.3 so the value of a is equal to 1.995 now to find the value of b we're going to use the y intercept so the y intercept is the b times the log best tens of a so the y-intercept from the graph is 0 0.16. So from the previous one, we know that the log base tens of A is the gradient, which is equal to 0 0.3. Therefore, to find the B, we're going to move the log base tens of A or the 0 0.3 to the right-hand side. It will be 0 0.16 divided by 0 0.3. So the answer for B will be 0 